Um, so hello everybody and thanks for signing up and listening into this webinar. Um, today I will present to you a new product from Segal uh, called Blueback Seismic Data Management. So Seismic Data Management or SDM as I will refer to it um, is a new data management software product from Segal. SDM is an enterprise management system for seismic data and SDM allows you to fully manage seismic assets and files as well as the associated knowledge, metadata and spatial data. SDM allows you to scan, fix and prepare seismic data for use in geoscience applications. This new product is provided through a modern web-based user interface with scalable distribution and deployment options. SDM can be run both um, on-premise or delivered as a service. By using the system, the enterprise will always have a full overview of the seismic data. So SDM provides a full lifecycle management of seismic assets from acquisition to purchase to processing to using the applications and through to archival. SDM provides a scalable corporate information management system for seismic data, which allows you to efficiently manage large amounts of seismic data stored online, in turn saving you cost and time in the management, use and storage of seismic data. SDM allows you to track data versions, data usage, seismic data duplications, and provides full knowledge management of seismic metadata and loading parameters. Uh, SDM allows you to essentially prepare geoscience application ready datasets and will integrate with GIS, Patrol Studio and other applications that consume seismic data. Um, so the main workflows uh, within, within SDM. So SDM crawls file systems and disks to discover seismic files and register them in the database. So pre and post stack, SegUI, ZUI and navigation files are covered in release one. SD, the SDM is then configured to undertake a more detailed rescan of the registered files to extract metadata and spatial data to the system. Data managers can then QC the scanning and the data uh, in the system to determine completeness and readiness for use in geoscience applications. And if necessary, the data can be processed to prepare it for use. Um, uh, with all processing steps and results managed by the SDM system. Users can then browse, search and select data using the SDM map and catalog. So SDM is accessed through um, a web browser application which communicates with a web server. The web server can execute on a user's desktop machine or on a central server computer uh, and the server can be configured to communicate with several job servers that perform the crawling, scanning and processing of the seismic files. The web and job servers both communicate with a SQL Server database where all the information and metadata is stored. Any geoscience application that uses the file type supported by SDM can read the files that are prepared and managed by the system. The database uh, can also be accessed from third party tools, so Excel, Spotfire and ArcGIS. And in future releases, plugins will be provided to facilitate direct integration with Petrel Studio and other geoscience applications. So SDM version one uh, offers several useful tools for processing and fixing of seismic data directly on disk. All the processes are managed and run via the SDM web application, allowing the data manager to fix and prepare data for use in geoscience applications. Uh, V1 processes are split 2D line, edit trace header, merge navigation, remove duplicate traces and cut seismic. We'll have a look at some examples of these in the demo. Uh, lastly, or last slide rather, um, the system is provided for two different user roles. The data manager role has full admin access to the system, so data managers can add and remove data and perform the processing. And the geoscience user role um, has browse and read access to the system only. Um, so we're going to jump into SDM web now and work through uh, an introduction to the SDM web application and interfaces undertake some examples of scanning, crawling, QC and verification, and also a couple of examples of uh, processing um, if uh, time permits. So this is SDM web. Um, it's a single interface system, sorry, a single interface for the system that allows you to manage, crawl, scan and process your full seismic cap catalog through a web browser. Uh, so we're gonna start the demo by taking a, a look through the SDM web app, uh, pages and data, uh, that's stored and managed by the system. Um, so this is the dashboard, this is the front page to the application, provides statistics about the files that are managed by the system. 
Um, so we have a summary bar across the top, uh, so stats for total surveys, total navigation, total seismic files, file instances, seismic file disk space, number of duplicate files, and duplicate file disk space. Um, we also have some graphical representations of um, seismic disk space by type or seismic disk space by format. Um, to the left of the, the page, we have the SDM uh, web menu, which gives access to the different parts of the application. So the content of this menu will depend on the user role. So the full menu that you can see here is available to the data manager, uh, but only the dashboard, the catalog, and the map are available to those with user privileges. Um, so the catalog brings up table views of the seismic files that have been scanned and, and are managed by the system. Um, so as such, there's two catalogs, the seismic file catalog and the navigation file catalog. Um, the seismic file catalog, uh, the data table uh, includes uh, for each file that's managed by the system and the survey name, uh, seismic type, the formats, the number of traces, the file size, sample rate, XY coordinates, shot points, CMP ranges, amplitude ranges, and sample format. Tables can be quickly sort of filtered by survey, um, sorted by column to get for number of files, for example, to show you the duplicates, uh, or filtered by uh, any other attribute, for example, seismic type. Um, it's possible to select any particular seismic object in the table. Uh, and open what's called detail mode. So this opens a panel to the right with detailed information about the selected data. Um, so we have general information about the seismic file and survey, the seismic file instances on disk, um, the EBCDIC header for this particular file, um, the audit trail, so when the file was scanned, uh, or when any processes have been executed against the file, the scan parameters, so how it was brought into the database, uh, in this case, you can see this has been scanned with the auto scanner. Uh, we'll touch on this a little bit later. Um, the inline cross line ranges and also the, um, the spatial record that the SQL Server database holds representing the boundary of this, this uh, file we'll see in the map view. So we can see SDM records and stores a high level of detail for each um, seismic file. In the navigation file catalog, um, information uh, is presented again in a tabular uh, presentation for each navigation file. Uh, so we have the survey name, the conflation policy that was used for scanning the file, uh, the number of points, point distance, file size, format, number of files, and XY coordinates. Again, in detail mode, um, we get the panel to the right for the navigation files. So this displays the header uh, in the navigation file plus, plus the first 50 lines of the um, navigation data. Load comments provides information about irregular point distances. Uh, navigation file lines um, allows the point range for each line to be inspected. And navigation spatial gives information about the length and extent validation for each line. Um, so you can see there's lots of valuable data from all your seismic files and assets collected and made available, available via the SDM system for both the QC um, and management of uh, seismic data. Uh, so seismic and navigation files that contain valid um, spatial data can be viewed in the map. Um, so this supports identification of a particular seismic file. Uh, and from the identification, you can also open the detailed view we saw previously. Let me select something. So you can get to the EBCDIC header, uh, and all of the uh, detailed information is available uh, through the map view. Um, the map view also supports making um, collections of data. So a user can select a group of seismic files, add them as a collection, uh, and save them. So these collections can be used to group data that will be used as input to one of the processing functions, uh, or communicate a group of seismic files between users. Also in the map, we can add uh, different um, WMS, uh, web map services. Um, that you may want to have available uh, in the application. So in the scanning page, um, this, con this contains the crawl and scan functions. Uh, so in to introduce seismic data into, SD into the SDM system, uh, a two-stage process is used. 
First, you must crawl disks to discover the files. So the crawler will look for SegUI, SGUI, ZGUI, P190, P184.nav, or any other extension you, you care to include. Um, so this crawl process will uh, record the headers from the file. And then these headers should be examined to see if there's any information about the coordinate system and byte positions uh, that can be used to co correctly configure um, the scan. So the structure of the um, disks and, and drives that were crawled um, are presented in the scan manager. Um, so this allows you to execute the second stage process required to fully scan the registered files and get the detailed meta information and extract the position data. So different scan options can be configured by directory. Um, so the scan options may include different conflation policies uh, and different scan settings to target different inline crossline or CDP or gather byte positions. Uh, allowing you to make appropriate scans for different assets globally, different vintages, and the different seismic data types. So we'll come back to this uh, crawl and scan process uh, shortly, um, following this initial look around SDM web. Uh, processing is used um, to access functions uh, for processing seismic data. So in version one, um, as I mentioned, we have processes for splitting 2D lines, editing trace headers, merging segway and navigation, removing duplicate traces, and cutting seismic on disk. Um, processing also contains functions for managing uh, queued and running jobs that are running on the job server. And also, um, it's possible to, to view the process history um, to see how each particular job has uh, been executed and if there was any problems. Uh, configuration allows the setup of um, coordinate reference systems, transformations to create conflation policies. Um, it also contains uh, options for managing survey and also creating categories to group um, the data by. Lastly, in administration, this contains uh, user account information and also the management of the uh, map layers. So that's a very quick look through the SDM web interfaces and different pages. Um, we're going to jump into an empty database uh, and work through um, the sort of core SDM workflow to um, crawl and register data. We'll then inspect the trace headers from the registered files, um, set up a couple of targeted scanning jobs, work through a QC and verification of scanning, and show some examples of the processing. So the first stage of the process is to um, decide on the disk folders that you want to crawl for seismic data. So I'm just going to run this against this directory here. I click to um, execute a crawl or a quick scan. See this has been now queued on the job server. So if I come to processing, um, you can see that this crawl process is queued. This will then be jumped up to, uh, uh, to be run um, as it's passed over to the job server. So the crawl process will um, scan through all the folders recursively um, and find the files with the given extensions. For each file, um, it calculates a checksum, see if the file already exists in the database or not, um, set the name of the object from the file name, uh, extract the header from the file to the database, save the file size. If the file is segwi, the sample rate, samples per trace, and sample format are recorded. And finally, the status of the file will be set to registered. So here you can see uh, the dashboard now shows the initial set of statistics for the data we've just discovered and registered um, as part of that initial crawl. So if we go to the scan manager now, um, so in the scan manager, the directory structure and files discovered are now presented in the tree. Um, so if you filter to all the registered files, so this shows all the directories we've uh, visited and the files that were found. And this exclamation mark um, shows us the files that have been registered but still require a full scan. So the next process would be to uh, come to the catalog. So we can see all the files are set to registered and we have limited information about the files stored in the database. So as I mentioned, um, the workflow would be to come and look at some of these files now in detail mode have a look at the EBCDIC header that's been extracted as part of the crawl, 
Um, see if there's any useful information that can help us configure the scan. So I can see that this particular file is ED50, UTM30, and uses uh, sort of standard uh, byte positions. Again, we can make similar inspections of the data we picked up, uh, navigation data we picked up. Again, have a look at the header, see if there's any useful information on the coordinate systems, um, the type of navigation file, and the position points record character. Um, so next, we need to define the conflation policies needed for reading and transforming the respective coordinate systems. So to def we need to define, so to define a conflation policy for that file we just examined, so the ED50 UTM30 file, we need a conflation policy to define how the projected coordinates in the file are transformed to longitude and latitude coordinates with the WGS84 datum, which is how all of the uh, spatial data is stored in the SQL Server database. So to do that, we need to um, find the appropriate uh, projection which in this case is uh, ED50 UTM30 North, and then um, select the appropriate transformation, which in this case is uh, number 23 with WKID1612. We click to create the conflation policy, and then we can go back to our scan manager. And for that particular directory, so 3D UTM30, so these were the files we examined the Obsidix for. Um, we can target a scan starting at this particular level and uh, click to create scan settings. So we're going to pick up the conflation policy we just defined. Uh, we're going to select the uh, seismic type to scan as 3D. Uh, and from the Segway scan mode, we're going to use auto scan. So Autoscan will examine a set of predefined headers for shot point, CDP, inline, crossline, etc., as well as applying some logic to see if it finds the expected patterns in the data, so constant inline and crossline increasing or decreasing uh, monotonously. So the Autoscan will allow you to automatically find the necessary byte positions for a reasonably good percentage of seismic data. So we can just click to set this scan off, and this will be passed over to the job server. Uh, if we also have a look at this pre-stack example, which I, for which I have a, 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 a scan configuration already set up. Um, so this is using a different conflation policy. The seismic type has been set to pre-stack, and you'll see that this is set up as a manual scan. So we have a look at these scan parameters. Uh, so for this particular file, I've used a third-party tool uh, to examine the file to determine the XY positions. Uh, the line, the gather, and the offset byte positions. And these have been used to set up a customized Segway scanning configuration. Again, we can just click scan, um, and this will be handed over to the job server and run in the background. So after scanning, the seismic navigation should be checked to make sure that the data has been scanned correctly. Um, so this can be done um, in the processing history page. So in the process history, uh, we can see that the check to see that all the scans are finished. Um, in detail mode, uh, we can see the input and output files, uh, the summary log, uh, or if indeed if there were any problems, we can check the processing log. And in this case, you can see that no segway X or Y header was, was found in the header. So in this case, you go back at just the scanning parameters um, to complete the scan successfully. Uh, when everything's been scanned successfully, we can review the data in the catalog again. Um, so now you can see that we have um, a full set of metadata in the table. Um, we can check the uh, scan scan parameters. So have the inline or do, are the, to make sure the correct uh, byte positions have been used. In general, we can check that the, the shot point, CDP, inline, crossline ranges uh, are as expected or within the expected ranges. We can also see if there's any um, breaks in the trace header numbering or trace distances for 2D data, um, which are reported here in seismic subsections. Uh, 
Um, we can also inspect the navigation catalog. So again, you can see we have a full set of uh, metadata for all the navigation files. Uh, again, in detail mode, um, we can check the load comments, which provides information about uh, irregular shot points, uh, irregular point distances, sorry. And in navigation file lines, uh, the point range for each line can be inspected. Uh, last kind of part of the verification, in the map view, we can expect, uh, inspect um, spatial positions of the data. So here you can see I have some 2D data in the K and GORMS, which will obviously need rescanning with the correct conflation policy. So if required, you can now use SDM processing to fix the data uh, as, as necessary. So just to talk you through some of these processes. Um, so the split 2D line, uh, so overlapping traces may occur during survey where a boat has had to revisit part of a particular line. These overlapping data can be difficult to load into Petrello Kingdom, um, and the split 2D line process will split sublines of one 2D line uh, into one segue file for each subline, such that correct loading can take place. Um, set trace header values can be uh, edited using, or tra sorry, trace header values can be edited using a mathematical expression with logical conditions to change the trace header values. So if you have um, a file with incorrect CDP, shot point, or inline, uh, you can use this tool to set new values for those trace headers. The merge uh, navigation merge processes can be used to set new XY coordinate values in the SegY trace headers. Uh, the new coordinates are read from a, a navigation file stored in the navigation file catalog. So if we go back to our um, seismic catalog and uh, have a look at some an example here. So this survey NA87. If we look at the x y coordinates, we can see that the uh, the x is kind of running from uh, you know minus 1500 to plus 150,000, and the y is missing. If we look at the corresponding navigation, um, we can see that the x y files for the navigation uh, look you know as expected for North Sea UTM 31. So we can use this merge navigation tool to write the XYs from the navigation file into the trace headers, the corresponding segway. Um, to do this, we make um, a collection of the files we want to process. So we select them in the catalog. We add the files uh, to a selection and then save them as a collection. We'll just call this merge. Um, we then go back to the merge navigation process pick up um, the file collection we just made, select the corresponding navigation file we want to read the XYs from, and then we just pair these up um, into the panel below. I have to do this manually because the name strings don't match here. Um, give it a suffix and click run. Um, so again, this navigation job has been queued on the job server. Um, so if we go to running, we can see the process has been queued. This will then be bumped onto the job server and executed. Okay, so that's uh, yeah, that's run pretty quickly. Um, so if we go back to the catalog and click refresh, um, so you can see that the the there's some new data at the top of the table here uh, with the merge suffix which now contains the correct set of XY uh, coordinates in the trace headers compared to the original files underneath. Um, again, in detail mode for this particular file we've just processed, um, in the audit trail, um, we can see that that process is recorded in the audit, audit trail um, and this kind of history is stored in the system. Um, let's just go back to processing. So remove duplicate traces. So sometimes you experience um, traces in a sequence that have the same shot point CDP or XY coordinates, which some applications uh, don't allow files with, with duplicate traces to be loaded. Uh, so this tool allows you to remove any such, du such duplication. Uh, lastly, cut seismic um, will allow you to remove traces um, from a segway file directly on disk outside um, of a given polygon. 
Um, so that kind of uh, completes the demo. So we'll look through the web application, a look at the kind of key workflows in the system, and also working through uh, some of the processing examples. So in summary, uh, SDM is a new enterprise management system for seismic data um, from Segal. It allows you to fully manage seismic assets and files, as well as the associated knowledge, metadata, and spatial information. SDM gives you a suite of tools for scanning, fixing, preparing seismic data for use in any geosense application. And all of this is provided through a modern uh, web-based user interface, which allows for scalable distribution um, and deployment options. Um, so this product is available um, now. Uh, it was released about three weeks ago. Um, uh, so this is actually our first kind of standalone product. So the core part of SDM uh, is not available on the Ocean Store. This is licensed and sold directly by Segal. So we have three evaluations available. As usual, we can assist you with the installation, support, uh, and any analysis. So please contact your local Segal account manager um, or email us on sale.geo.segal.com uh, if you would like to find out some more information. So I'm going to open this up for some Q&A. Um, so if you go into your GoToMeeting panel, and um, if you just expand it from the right-hand side of your screen, you'll be able to submit any questions into the uh, dialog. Uh, and we have my colleague Kettle, um, is the panelist, who's the Software Portfolio Manager for Data Management. Um, so if you have any questions, um, please submit them now, um, and we can take them as they come in. Hi, Kettle, are you there? Uh, yes, uh, I'm here, Mark. Hi. Um, okay, so we have a question. Is there a plan to integrate with Patrell um, or Studio via the plugins? Yes, do you want me to, to answer that? Or? Yes, please, yep. Yeah. Again? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, we have in our roadmap to provide, uh, a, a, a firstly, a plugin for Pachel that will uh, make it easy to uh, to integrate, um, uh, for example, load uh, data from the uh, STM database into a Pachel project. Uh, that's first on our roadmap. Uh, longer term, also we have a, uh, on the roadmap to have a studio uh, manager plugin to. To, to do the same uh, thing. Uh, we haven't uh, scheduled uh, this uh, yet, um, um, uh, but um, in, in, in a release uh, not too far into the horizon. Um, I guess, can you see the question panel, Kettle? Uh, no, I can't. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so question, how do you export data from the system? <clears throat> yeah, well, all, 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 um, all, all the data is uh, stored on disk as uh, SegWi files. Uh, so, um, uh, in that sense, there's no need to really export data because every, every, uh, all the, um, for example, if you run a process, the, the, the result will be stored in a SegWi file. So that file can then be directly used um, uh, in a geoscience uh, application. Uh, so the the um, uh, the uh, the physical storage of the uh, of the seismic files is available. Uh, you can see that in the detail uh, view of the in the catalog where the file instances are stored on disk, and and from there pick up uh, the uh, the output file. I guess in terms of the uh, metadata as well that's stored in the system, that can just be read directly from SQL Server um, into Spotfire or Excel if you want to export that kind of data um, for analysis. Yeah, exactly. So, so the, um, the the data the data base schema can be accessed by third-party applications like uh, Spotfire, Excel, and also the spatial data 
can be accessed from ArcGIS to um, to to uh, to get to get that into the GIS workflows. Hmm. A uh, question here about the uh, group uh, user roles, so um, users and data managers. Uh, just sort of paraphrasing this a little bit, can they be managed by AD group when you're configuring the, the user roles? <coughs> uh, currently not. Uh, to, to in the current version, all the, the users have to be entered into the, the uh, administration uh, panel in the web application. Uh, they're then registered as named users in the, and, and uh, saved in the database. Mm. Uh, so, 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 um, and then for each user, the role has to be to be set uh, per user. Uh, and there's no, there's currently no way to to do it by AD uh, groups. Okay. I have a question about the licensing. Um, how is it licensed per user or per company? So I guess we. Yeah. So the. Go on. And the like. Yeah, go ahead, oh. Mark. Uh, I was just going to say the licensing um, is kind of a, a site-driven, same as Project Tracker. Um, so you, we have a SDM core module, um, which is kind of like the basic uh, package, which comes with one data manager uh, sort of user, sorry, one data manager license. Uh, and then on top of that, you can buy additional uh, data manager access and user access um, at each site. A uh, question about exporting data from the map. Um, can we export data from the map uh, or spatial data from the map? <clears throat> uh, yes. So, um, uh, well, they, they, not uh, directly from the map, but the, uh, the spatial uh, information that's saved into the database can be accessed from uh, ArcGIS, for example, as um, as, um, as um, the query layers in uh, define that in in ArcMap, and this um, uh, this can further be um, uh, used in um, ArcGIS server, and thereby making the spatial information uh, um, available to a wider uh, uh, group of users in the organization. A uh, question about the audit trail. Um, so the information in the audit trail will only identify. Uh, what has been done on the seismic files whilst managed by the SDM system. Um, will there be a historic audit trail available also? <coughs> um, does this tie in? Uh, well, uh, it's... I was just going to say, does this tie in with the tracker integration at a later date, maybe? Um, well, no, not really. Currently, it's uh, it's only the actions in SDM that we can manage in the in the audit um, trail. There's also the the processing history with uh, all the process details uh, will also be it's also covered by SDM. And uh, also, if you if you chain uh, some process together, you can you can follow the kind of chain of actions that have been done with the data. Uh, but if there are any uh, information that goes on outside of STM, uh, the, the, we, we don't have any way of uh, currently um, uh, tracking that type of information. Um, okay, so I guess we can, uh, there's still quite a few questions here, but I guess we need to sort of wrap up. Um, what we'll do, we have a list of all the questions that have come in. Um, and we'll respond to them all via email, um, if that's okay, um, after this has been closed out. Um, so I guess we'll just kind of um, wrap up. So thank you, Kettle. Um, so just again, you know, uh, if you want any more information, uh, please contact your account manager, Gal account manager. Um, or email us on sales.go at segal.com. Uh, just one last thing. So this webinar has been recorded. So everybody who's attended today will receive um, a link to the recording of the webinar tomorrow. And also those of you who didn't attend will also get a link. <laughs> um, so that's it, I guess. Uh, so all, all that's left to say is uh, thank you very much for your attention uh, and have a nice day.